component form that was yesterday. Oh, wait, hold on. Standard form, uh -huh. where you have the magnitude and the angle. Yesterday we talked about component form. Rosa, I sent you a link, I think. Uh, if y'all have your notes, I think we, uh, we broke this down using the, to find the x value, we did magnitude cosine theta, and to find the y component, we did magnitude sine theta. Does anybody have those notes readily available? Tell me those digits, one after, one uh, near tenth. Haley, it looks like she's got it. Um, the x component, y component. Yeah. <laughs> These are standard form of a vector, component form of a vector, I think it, this was 2.5, fine. Mm -hmm. Calculator, five cosine 30 is? 4.3. 4.3. All right, allow me to introduce you to AI plus BJ form. <laughs> AI plus BJ form. 4.3 I <coughs> plus 2.5 J. It's literally that easy. You take the x and you stick it in front of this i thing, and you take the y and you stick it in front of this j thing. That's it. That's 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 the answer. That's that's the lesson. That's uh, no, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there are a lot of similarities. So what we'll find here momentarily, if you know how to go from standard form to component form, then it's going to be that same process to go from standard form to AI plus BJ form. Okay. Uh, now you might be wondering, what is this I and this J thing? Well, I'll show you. Yes. So I is technically, it's the unit vector in uh, the X direction. So that is equal to the unit vector one zero. Um, I don't really draw the dot. I just draw an I with the little vector thing over it. Uh, Alex makes it bold because that's what they do with vectors is they bold them. But this is what I do, what a lot of other textbooks will do as well. If we were to graph that, it would look like a horizontal line going to the right of a length one. The J vector is the unit vector in the positive Y direction. So that's zero, one. Anybody want to make a guess what that would look like? <coughs> Straight up. So, if I have 4.3 times vector i, what that really means is, if you remember yesterday, when we had a, uh, a multiplier in front, so like, that's 4, angle bracket, it's the 4.3 times the 1, so 4.3, and the 4.3 times the 0, so it looks like that. So. 4.3i means 4 in the x, 4.3 in the exponent, 0 in the y component. Uh, 2.5j means 2.5 times 0, 2.5 times 1, so I end up with 2.5. And furthermore, if you remember from yesterday, when we add vectors, okay, we add vectors, okay, the way we got the answer, like if I have those two vectors added together, if you recall, we took the x components and added them together, so 4.3 plus 0 is 4.3, and you add the y components together, 0 and 2.5, this will be 2.5. So you can see that 4.3i plus 2.5j is just bracket 4.3 comma 2.5, just for a visual game, sorry about that. So you just add them? Yeah, so you just, I mean, it's the same thing we did yesterday. When we were adding uh, vectors in component form, you would just take the x and mm -hmm. the x, and that was your, your new resultant x. You took the y, added the y, and that was your resultant y. Right. Okay. Uh, now you might say, why even bother with this? That component form seems really nice. And uh, part of the answer is, is because this kind of resembles uh, an algebraic expression. 
And so a lot of your algebra rules kind of come to play here. So for instance, if I were to have the vector 2i plus 3j, and I wanted to add that to the vector um, 7i plus 4j. So yesterday we would have just brackets with a comma, brackets with a comma. But now when we have it uh, looking like this, all of a sudden your algebra sense is tingling. <laughs> and you're thinking, ah, oh, 2i and 7i, that's a... Uh, those are like terms, right? So the 2i plus 7i, that's 9i. And the 3j and the 4j, those are like terms. I can combine those. Uh, so that's 7j. And in fact, that's what the answer is. That's oh, I thought you were going to be like, but it's wrong. No, no, no. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's why we do it. Because um, all you're turning vector problems into <coughs> sort of like algebra problems. And there's a whole lot of... Algebra is a fully developed discipline. There's all sorts of stuff that we can do with algebra. So if we can kind of make vectors kind of look like algebra, then we can start doing some pretty cool stuff And then it, it, because we know algebra really well. Like we can do combining like terms and things like that. Right? And if you remember, that's, this is exactly what you would have had if yesterday in component form. You would have had 2i comma 3. I'm no, sorry. It would have just been 2, 3 plus uh, 7, 4. And you would have done the same thing. The 2 plus the 7 is the 9. 3 plus the 4 is the 7. You can see so many similarities. We're all pretty good. So, um, yesterday, when we multiplied, if we had, say, maybe 5 times the vector, which was 2, 6, we saw that it was 5 times 2, which is 10, so 5 times the x part. 5 times the y part, so 30. When we are in AI plus BJ form, that would look like 5 times 2i plus 6j. And you get 5 times 2i, so that's 10i. 5 times 6j is 30j. Because you're, it looks like algebra, it looks like distribution, and it is. That's how, that's how it works. Uh, what's more, this is labeled as i, and this is labeled as j, and those can't combine, which matches the physical reality that stuff that is horizontal cannot combine with stuff that is vertical. At, if, I'm, if I'm going up or down, you know, pushing left or right is not going to change at all the up and down motion. Up and down can only be changed by up and down forces. Uh, left and right, I mean, it will we'll change its left and right position, but it's not gonna change the up and down. In the same way, no matter how big or how small the x component or the i component is, it's, you're not going to be able to combine that with the j. Okay? Um, we saw yesterday and last week and all that stuff like that, we are able to go from standard form to component form via the formula <coughs> magnitude, cosine theta, magnitude, sine theta, right? Mm -hmm. That also extends clearly to those guys right there. How did we go from component form back to magnitude, Mia? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem, channeling <laughs> her even in her absence, that's right. <laughs> and how did we go from component form to the angle? Inverse tangent y over x. Inverse absolute tangent, absolute value, value y over x plus your head, yeah. thinking about which quadrant you're in, okay? All of that is completely true of these. If you have AI plus BJ, this is your X, this is your Y. If you need to find the magnitude, Pythagorean theorem. If you need to find theta, inverse tangent absolute value, Y over X plus your head to figure out the quadrant, okay? So, <laughs> I don't know if there's any more theory here. I just kind of thought, let's uh, flip, through, through, flip through that <laughs> and find some interesting problems to take care of real quickly. Okay. Um, Would you like to do number one? Sure. Just
to get started, I think you should do that. <laughs> Haley, go ahead and read number one to us. The vector v is initial point zero zero is shown below. Right hand in the form v equals a i plus v j, where a and b are integers. Okay. So I need to convert this into an ai plus v j form here. So v equals. Anybody want to reckon a guess on what a is? Negative two i. She says negative two. Let's see if she says. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's the x part. So negative two i. Keep going there, Hannah. Uh, three. Yeah. Plus four. Plus four. Plus four. Yeah. No commas today. And we don't need the brackets. That is correct. No brackets. Know your vector forms. Wow, that is so difficult. I know. I probably should not have given you three of those on the paper, but that's okay. Uh, let's just keep going down the list here. Uh, what about number four? Mason, read number four to us there, please. A vector t has an initial point negative 5, negative 2, and a terminal point of negative 3, 4. Write t in the form of t equals a i plus bj. So it's, all, it's kind of like that first one that we just did, but now that we don't have a graph, it's just telling us a problem. Okay? So we're starting negative 5, negative 2, and we're ending here. This is actually very similar to the type of problems we had yesterday. Okay? Uh, where we, if you remember the formula, it was... I think x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. That's how we found those, uh, found the, the x component, y component. It's going to be the same thing, only it's going to be x2 minus x1 times vector times i plus y2 minus y1 vector j. So uh, we have x1, y1, x2, y2, just labeling everything. So negative 3 minus negative 5. Uh, make sure to do this right. Is that 2? Two? 2, yeah. Okay. So 2i plus, and then we have negative 2, oh, hold on. Y2 minus y So 4 minus negative 2, so 6j. So when do you know when to, like, like over there when they're leaving? This, oh yeah, I mean, well, I mean, this is a problem of adding two vectors. Mm -hmm. uh, this right here is a problem of it, this is an initial point, negative five, negative two, mm -hmm. and a terminal point, negative three, four. So this problem is, I just gave you two <coughs> points. To tell me what the vector is. This problem over here is. Here's a vector, here's a vector, add the vectors together. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Good question. Because I know it is kind of, uh, yeah, they all kind of look alike. You just have to uh, know what, what information you're taking from this and what the type of problem it is. Um, ooh, okay, number seven looks pretty good. Nick, read that one to us. Yeah. One of the magnitude of the vector v equals negative six i minus six j. How would you go about finding the magnitude of this vector, Nick? Um, add by n tangent <coughs> inverse tangent. You're close, but not quite. That inverse tangent is helpful for finding the angle. Okay, Rosa. How are we going to find the, the magnitude? Nope, not normal tangent. The answer, I'll draw the picture for us. And you'll be like, oh, yeah. This says negative 6i, which is <coughs> negative 6 in the x direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 4j means 4 down. 1, 2, 3, 4.
How would I find the magnitude? Pythagorean theorem. So the square root of the sum of the squares. So uh, you could do negative six squared. I'm sure y'all are smart enough. Square root of the sum of the squares. So negative six squared plus negative four squared. So that's going to be 36 plus 16. So the square root of 52. And they want us to simplify this. Uh, are there any perfect squares that go into 52? 413. 413? So I can split that up into uh, square root of 4 times 13. I can pull out 2, so 2 root of 13 is, is simplified for absolute form. Uh, the key there, magnitude. Nick was asking for the magnitude. That, I'm just telling you, like that's, that's that indicator that you're going to use Pythagorean theorem. <coughs> Any questions? Ah, number 10 looks interesting. Narabi, read that one to us. Okay. So this is where all your algebra skills are going to come into play. So it's negative 6 times v. I'll put it in parentheses. v is 5i minus 6j. So we'll just distribute. Negative 6 times 5? Negative 30. Negative 30i. Negative 6 times negative 6? Positive 36j. Positive 36j. That part's finished. V minus W, I'll write V, which is 5I minus 6J minus, and I'll put parentheses W, 8I minus J. And once again, algebra to the rescue. 5I minus 8I. We can make negative 7i, but for w. No, I'm looking at number 10. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. That's, uh, yeah. And then, so, yeah. And then okay. Negative 6 minus 1, so negative 6 plus 1, negative 5. That's not too bad at all. I think we ought to be able to knock these out pretty quickly. <coughs> Almost finished. Let's scan down here, see if there's anything else that's kind of tricky. Uh, 12, 12 looks very much the same. Do y'all think you can handle 14? Yeah. Find the vector 5u minus 2v. So it's going to be 5 times vector u minus 2 times vector v. So you just take the 5 and multiply it by those guys, negative 2, both, and you'll add them all up. OK. Uh, this one, however, I think is pretty good. Rosa, read to us number 16. Find the directly angle of the vector w equals 8i minus 4j. That is, find the angle between 0 degrees and 360 degrees that w makes with a positive angle. Measure the counterclockwise, then W will be negative 10. All right. I would recommend for these problems, you just get your picture here. 8i minus 4j. Rosa, which quadrant do you think we're going to be in? 8i minus 4j. You are correct. 8i means go over to the right 8. Minus 4j means we're going down 4. And this right here is our vector. And they're not asking for the magnitude. They're asking for the angle. Uh, more specifically, the positive angle uh, between 0 and 360 as measured from the positive x-axis using counterclockwise rotation, which is theta. 
However, as smart pre-cal students, we're not going to mess with where, figuring out what theta is. We're going to right now just figure out <coughs> theta ref, and then we'll use our head and our brains to figure out exactly what theta is. Now theta ref is that inverse tangent thing you were talking about all the time. So that would be inverse tangent. Remember absolute value because we're just going to treat this like a regular triangle. So y over x, so 4 over 8. Uh, anybody with a calculator, tell me what inverse tangent of 1 half is. Is it? Ma no, you went, I don't know. Say it again. That sounds about right. Anybody else get that same thing? 26 point? Um, 26.6. 26.6? Give me one more digit. 26 point? Five. Five, six. Okay. So that's theta ref. Five, seven. Okay. <laughs> Let's use our head to figure out what is theta. So theta ref is 26.5. How am I going to figure out what this angle is here? Yeah. 360 minus that angle. 133.43? 133.43? Yeah. 333. Yeah. 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 Triple three dot four three. Yeah. So three threes and four threes. Okay. And they say uh, do not round any intermediate computations and round your answer to the nearest whole number. Okay. So <coughs> 333 degrees. Uh, let's see if that's right. Yep. Okay. You see, it's still that thing that we did last week. Going from the x com and y component back to magnitude and, and to angle, or going from magnitude and, and angle to the x and y component. If we look here, number 17, same kind of thing, find the direction <coughs> angle. 18, find the direction angle. 19 looks a little bit different. This says, suppose the vector v has a magnitude of 43 and makes an angle of 123. Mm. So which quadrant are we in, Ashley? Um, we're in the first quadrant? Not with 123 degrees. Oh, my bad. Second. Second quadrant is correct. <laughs> Write this vector in AI plus BJ. So, okay, so they're really just asking, once again, what's the X component and what's the Y component? Do y'all remember the formulas for the X and the Y part? Yeah. X equals? Oh, okay. Magnitude cosine. Magnitude cosine, yep. So 5 cosine 123. And Y is? Magnitude sine. sine 123 degrees. Now, you might be saying, oh, 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 wait a second, we're in the second quadrant, don't we need to do something weird, stuff like that. And the answer is no. We ran through an entire activity last week, if you remember, where we, we tried it out in every single one of the four quadrants where we did x cosine theta and, uh, or sorry, uh, magnitude cosine theta and magnitude sine theta. And based on sine and cosine, it all, it all works out positive and negative. It's going to give you the exact same <coughs> answer. So, 5 cosine theta 123 is? Negative 23.42. I'm sorry, you said negative what? 23.42. I don't think it's 23 mm. because no. it's got to be smaller negative. than 5. Negative 2.7. Oh, I didn't 7. do 5. <laughs> I did 43. <laughs> Wait, where did you get 43? Oh, magnitude. Oh, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, right, I'm the one that's off here. Yeah. Good job, Hannah. <laughs> magnitude 43. Yeah, 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 yeah. Magnitude 43. 46.06. Could you turn those into AI plus BJ form? Yes. You just add the I and the J to them? Yeah, negative 23.42 I plus 36.06 J. There you go. John and Jeremy, in case you're wondering, is there a K vector, a K unit vector? There is. 
Okay. When you enter in three dimensions, okay? So here's the extension for anybody that's curious. John, Jeremy, this one's for you guys. Vector I in three dimensions is one, zero, zero. Vector J, zero, one, zero. And vector K, zero, zero, one. Oh, cute. It's the unit vector in three dimensions. <coughs> like out of like if this was the board, it would be like out of the page. Oh. Is that like, like yes, <laughs> yes.